Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another fabulous webinar from Cubica AMF. Today, my co-host and I, Dottie San Martin, I'm Jay Nephew, and we're here to talk to you about how you can have a great 2021 first quarter. Um, the name of our, our, our webinar was Three Steps to a Successful 2021. And for sure, um, we're gonna give you those three steps. I will ask you if you are not, um, if you are not, uh, I'm gonna put this in gallery view. Sorry guys, I can barely see what I'm, the screen. If you're not gonna, if you have your camera on, you could just turn that off, it's fine. Um, so today we're gonna talk about three steps to a successful first quarter. I apologize for the little clumsy start. Dottie, thanks for joining us here. Um, welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. I uh, got thrown off by my video. You know, we, we've got all these settings on Zoom now, so it makes it a little interesting when one of them's a little different than we're used to. Um, joining me today, like I said, is Dottie San Martin and myself. Behind the scenes, though, we have Kyle Calcote, and he is our webinar manager. So he's the guy who admits you. He's the guy who's going to do all the little tricks and things that we ask him to do uh, during the webinar. I see a lot of familiar names out there, so I'd like to say hi to everybody, and thanks for joining us today. Hi, Christine, I see you've got your camera on again today. Good to see you. All right, um, you know, we're rounding the corner from 2020 to 2021, right? How many people, how many people want to uh, get to 2021? How many people wish they could push a button and get to 2021 today? Put your, put, raise your hand button if you, push your raise your hand button there if you've got that. Or raise your hand physically. Yep, one, Thomas said so. Amanda thinks so. A lot of people do. Dottie, what do you say? Well, you know, I'm going to be the devil's advocate here because mm. I'm not ready for 2021 just yet because there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be done today that sets us up for 2021. And I don't know about you, but enough stuff has happened in 2020 that I want to make sure that 2021 is as successful as it can be. And that starts now. That's true. So that's what we're going to talk about today, the three steps that you need to be taking today so your 2021 is amazing, right? And if you wait until 2021 to start attacking 2021, you're already three months behind. You're, it's just a little bit too late for you. So I'm kind of giving them a little bit of thunder that we're going to talk about today. Um, what are the three steps that we say we need to be sure of when we uh, talk about having a successful first quarter. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen often throughout the day, so if I mess this part up, well, you can blame me, it's okay. Um, but here we go. So we have three simple steps to get you to success in 2021. It's evaluate, plan, and execute. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the webinar's over. So you all have that information now. <laughs> and good luck. No, that's not how we're gonna do this. Um, Back to you, Dottie. Uh, evaluate, plan, and execute. There's three steps. We're going to talk about each one in detail. And each step has um, three kind of buckets that go with it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when we start off with evaluate, there's many different ways that you can evaluate and many different things that you can evaluate. Um, I like to take a deep dive into what I call business insights. So where are their areas of opportunity? Who is my customer? Those are things that I want to look at. What demographic or target audience should I be going after? Am I not getting a specific demographic that I should be getting? Those are things that go into um, looking at your business and figuring out where there are opportunities. Um, if you have a specific demographic that you that you see is missing from from your audience how do you go about getting those where do you find them what things are important to them so you you want to take a really deep dive into the the who is my customer where do i go to get that customer what opportunities have i missed out on and that's all a part of uh, the evaluation process and if there's a specific demographic and we want to go after them what is important to that particular demographic? You know, with each of the demographics, there's a specific way that they prefer. Is it TikTok or, you know, for that younger audience? Or is it Facebook for that one that's not quite so young, more my age? 
Um, so to identify that is all part of that evaluation process. You, you said a lot about that. The evaluation process does need to be done from a holistic point of view, like a, a much overarching thing. So business insights are kind of the thing you would look at before you even start the evaluation process as a whole, uh, that step of the process, I should say. And when I talked about there being three buckets earlier, within each one of those phases, the evaluate, plan, and execute phases, you're going to do the same three buckets that you're going to evaluate, plan, and execute. And those buckets are very simple. You're going to, you're going to uh, look at your operational needs. You're going to look at your marketing needs, and you're going to look at metrics. Those are the three main buckets that we're going to talk about. Now, that slide that I showed you a little bit earlier, I don't want you to worry about writing notes down here today and filling stuff out because I want you to pay attention and be involved with us. All the notes that are going to fill in those little slide that fill in those columns there, we're going to give to you as a takeaway today, along with another little treat that Dottie cooked up for you. So, um, don't stress about making too many notes. Uh, I'd rather you I'd rather you be present with us. Let's dig into the evaluate phase. You talked about the business insight. So now, once you've looked at those overarching things like you know the who, the what, and the what and the where and the when, now we're going to talk about specifically what should I evaluate when it comes to my operational needs? And I'll start with this one. You know, what special needs did this event and program require when you ran it past? So when you look at what, um, what you're going to evaluate, I'm going to look in what events did I run in the past during this same time frame? We're talking January 1 to March 30th. What events did I run in the past? And let's go down through them. Um, uh, what special needs did the event require? I'm sorry, I had to look down my, my paper. Were they easy to provide? And does this event require additional staff? Because those are key things that you need to know before you agree to do it again or agree to change it. But then the other thing you're going to look at, what events that I ran in the past will I carry over from last year to this year? And how many new events will I create for this year rather than just sticking with what I've done in the past? So that's kind of the, um, the operational section. And then you've got the marketing section. Uh, Dottie, what should they look for in the marketing section? What should they evaluate in the, uh, in the marketing portion of the evaluation phase? Well, first of all, with the marketing uh, phase, Jay, you want to, again, you want to go back and see what you marketed. If, it, if this is a program that you've run in the past, how did you market it? And was it successful in the way in which you marketed it previously? If not, perhaps you need to figure out, is there a better way for me to market this particular program? And if it's a new program, then certainly go back to that program and look at what, you, what audience you're going after. Once you've determined that the audience you're going after is your young adult, then that will determine how you want to market to them. Because keep in mind, when it comes to your customers, you really need to know your customer because there are different ways to market to different customers. And if uh, you are trying to market a program to say a Gen Zer and you want to send them a direct mail, that may not be the best way to get their attention. Right. Um, so you really need to evaluate not just that program, but how you're going to market that program to the audience that you're going after. That would so be that that is a great recommendation. And now if we move on to the metrics portion of the evaluation phase, what am I going to look at for metrics? Well, the first thing I have listed is what were the metrics from the last time I ran these events, all, all the previous ones? You know, what was the revenue? What were the number of sales? What were the engagement from the audience that did come in? What was the feedback I received from customers and from staff? Um, and did my metrics that I received, did they meet my expectations when I planned this event? So those are two really key things that you have to look at and be honest with yourself. If you're spending a lot of time running a quarter mania special and you don't see a spike in revenue, in traffic, in games bold, in food and beverage sales, whatever it may be that you've decided your metrics are, well, maybe that might not be the right promo to run. Absolutely. And Jay, that brings up another point. If this is a new program that you're creating, what is the expectation? What is your goal? Make sure that you have a goal in mind and that's going to be the metric that you want to accomplish or exceed. So make sure that um, you're putting realistic, met you know, a, a realistic goal in place. And of course, the, the metrics behind it will tell the story. 
Yeah, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next phase, the planning phase. So um, under the evaluation phase, I'm going to share my screen again with you because I filled in that first little bucket for you so you can kind of see with us where we're at. And what, what does it show? Well, as soon as it pops up, <laughs> we talked about those business insights, the where, the who, and the what. We talked about operational needs. Are there special needs to execute a program? Do you need more staff? you know, what programs are you going to rerun? What do you, how many new programs do you think you need to fill this time frame that you're going to plan for? And then your marketing needs are there, uh, marketing evaluation things, what was done for the past, what was the effectiveness, and then your results. What were those metrics from last time and did they meet your expectations? Now, um, feedback. We, we mentioned the word feedback, didn't we, Dottie? We did. And you know what I forgot to ask? I forgot to ask Kyle to drop the poll. So Kyle's going to drop a poll to all of our, our, our uh, attendees today. Wow, I'm tongue-tied. I might better drink a little more caffeine. Um, Kyle's going to drop a poll to the attendees today. And we're going to ask a question. Where is the, who should you turn to, if you look in the chat, who should you turn to for um, feedback? Who should you look to for feedback? So I'm going to wait for that poll to come in real quick. And Kyle, when you see the um, results, I'm going to tick my answer on here. Oh, I can't. Oh, there we go. It's in progress. So the attendees are viewing it. I, I've never ran the poll, so I apologize for the little bit of a delay, guys. But go ahead and, and choose. And you can choose more than one if you think uh, there's a couple that are right. Jay, while that poll is coming in, um, Christine has a question. It says, Jay, uh, don't you think we need to adjust desired metrics for 2021 due to continuing COVID restrictions? Christine, that's a fantastic, uh, fantastic question. Jay, I'll let you go for that, and then I'll add my two cents after Okay, we're done. for sure. Christine, I think you should adjust your desired metrics for 2021 only, only from the point of view of um, uh, limitations on uh, the capacity per, perhaps or restrictions that you have when it comes to uh, every other lane if you're one of those people that have to do that now now we don't know where 2021 is going to end up we know where we're starting it from pretty much um, but we do know that that's going to change throughout the quarter and throughout the year so i would be um a little cautious when i need to but if you're one of those centers christine that have been open for a while um you probably see some trends in your revenue now with the vibe. Where are, what state are you in, Christine? I can see you there. You can mouth it. I can probably read it. Thank you. Uh, in Pennsylvania? Pittsburgh. Oh, that's right. You were closed down a long time. Well, so, yeah. We still have only 50% capacity, and the bars are not allowed to be open. So we have a lot, a lot, of, a yeah. lot of hassles to get over. <laughs> Yeah, in your case, yeah, if I was in your shoes, I would definitely uh, have a very cautious mindset with my numbers of what I'm expecting to bring in. But I would also try to base that on what my past few weeks have been and what the trend seems to be. If you're getting more casual customers come in, that's great. If you're seeing that increase in your league bowlers all wanting to participate again and being able to fill that 50% that you're able to have, then you know maybe you've got a little more solid ground to base your, your opinion on. Dottie, what do you say? Well, you know, when it comes to what we need to do as a result of the pandemic, I think we also need to be mindful that our programs may need to be uh, changed as well because, you know, what we found early on when centers started to reopen was the ones coming back first and more often were those competitive bowlers. So, you know, our programming as such may be that we have more programs that are designed specifically for that audience. As time has gone on and centers have remained open longer, we have started to see that young adult come back in and, you know, obviously the families are a little bit slower to come in than the others. So we certainly need to modify our programming based on uh, the pandemic. And then of course, you know, we all know that uh, uh, events, planned events, corporate events specifically are a, a little bit more challenging and we have to be a little bit more creative with what we do with specifically with corporate events because we are limited. And there's still that level of confidence that, that you know, people aren't quite where they need to be. So For I sure. think that we need to continue to do that. And I don't think that this is something, you know, now with the pandemic, 
our need to go back and evaluate is even greater than it's ever been in the past. And to have a plan in place and realize that you may need to pivot rather quickly from that plan it is really key. And I think early on, the, the proprietors that were able to open, they found that out right away that you need to have a plan in place, but you also need to be thinking, I'm going to say beyond the frame and mm -hmm. understand that there are, uh, you, you're going to have to be able to change things on the fly uh, based on where we are in the pandemic and the feedback that you're getting from the customers. So the feedback phase doesn't just stop just because you've gone through a one week period where you're looking at everything, your feedback is being gathered constantly. You're constantly looking at your customer. You're constantly asking your frontline employers, uh, employees, and you're constantly listening to what the customers are saying. So great question, Christine, and thank you for uh, bringing it to our attention. Thank you, Christine. Uh, I'm sharing the results of the poll. I hope you guys can see that on your screen because I'm not quite sure how it looks to you guys. But it's interesting. So, you know, we had multiple people uh, respond and the number one answer was customers and then frontline staff was right behind them. Managers and fr fam friends and family were tied. And then the last one was vendors. Why did I do this little exercise, do you think? Um, I personally believe that feedback is a valuable resource that should be considered from pretty much all sources. Now, what you do with that feedback is up to you, but you can get some really good feedback, obviously from your customers, your frontline staff, your managers, even your friends and family. They have your best interest at heart too, hopefully when they come in your center and they have those eyes on them that are different than yours. They're probably not there quite as much as you, um, but your vendors, Dottie brought up a really good point. I'm going to let Dottie tell you about the vendor. Talk to Dottie, tell them about what you said to me earlier when we talked about this little point. Right. Well, you know, Jay, you need to be able to leverage your vendors. And um, I think all of us have a very good relationship with most of our vendors. Or if you don't, I would certainly recommend that you work towards doing that. Because your vendors are very valuable to you. Not only do they provide you something or a service, but they're also... Uh, they have your best interest at heart, too. They want to see you grow because the, the, the more successful you are, the more successful they're going to be. So, I mean, it's just it's, it's a known thing. Um, but also when you are in that plan or when you are in that feedback stage uh, and then as we start to get into the next stage, which is planning, uh, leverage your vendors because you can very easily uh, build programs around your vendors, uh, specifically your liquor vendors and your beer vendors. Even though I, I am from Texas and Texas has very strict guidelines when it comes to tech, uh, alcoholic beverages. But if you um, put your thinking cap on and you really think, how can they help me? How can I help them? And how can we provide a very unique program that's going to light our customers up. And I guarantee you there are tons of opportunities out there for you to be able to leverage those. If you are a, an IC provider, leverage those people. If you have a, 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 a Jack Daniels uh, in your house, do a just jacking around league and have fun with it. You know, yeah. think about it. Think about it. They you can want use... to work with you as bad as you want to work with them. And their brand recognition is super valuable to you. That's the reason why you have them in your center. You don't have a, a slush puppy machine because it's the cheapest, right? Like you just don't. Um, I mean, that was my nemesis forever at my center was the damn slush puppy machine because the damn thing never worked properly. But every kid had to have a slush puppy when they came in. So I loved it, but I hated it. So yeah, it was, it was you know, you know, the value of the branding is there. And that, that, that feedback that the vendors are going to give you um, with brief, with relationship to their product that they're moving or not moving in some cases, I think that could be valuable to you. And, but that kind of really goes back to the business insights that Dottie was talking about earlier. Feedback can come from anywhere, but think about all that stuff with your business insights before you start your evaluation process. All right, enough about evaluating. We can evaluate till the cows come home. Let's move on to planning. That's the fun part. Well, I think it's all kind of fun, but uh, <laughs> in the planning phase, same three buckets, right? Operational, marketing, metrics. Dottie, is this where you wanted to uh, talk about the planning of the operational uh, phase? No, I think you were going to talk about marketing. I'm going to take operational on this one. 
<laughs> we, no, you'd no. think we would never went over this before because we've been doing it forever. Um, operationally, when you're planning, what do you need to look at operationally? Well, what are the new events that you have to create? We talked about that in the evaluation process. Now you're going to commit to them. These are the new events I'm going to create. Is there a budget? for these events. Maybe you're going to do something that requires a budget and you're going to define what that is. And then you ask yourself, do any of these events require me to have additional staff on premise for them? Um, other than a normal Saturday night or Thursday night or Monday afternoon, whatever the program may be, okay? So those are your three operational things to think about during the planning phase. Moving into the marketing bucket of the planning phase, Dottie. Yes, absolutely, Jay. You know, planning is so very important, and especially when it comes to directing the future of your business, you don't want to um, just leave it up to chance. You want to make sure that you've thought of everything possible. You've looked at every opportunity. So the planning phase is very important. If you are a week out from an event and you try to throw something together, I guarantee you that you are going to miss some, at least a portion of the opportunity, and it's going to show. However, when you when you plan in advance, and when, when I say plan in advance, I mean write your plan down. Have a plan, a physical plan in place. There is something to be said about you know, committing Putting it to paper. a piece of paper and saying, this is my plan, whether you're writing it out or you're typing it out. I personally like to work by a calendar and a very detailed checklist. That's and what motivates me. That's what keeps me going. And, you know, everybody should have, let, let me just ask you, how many of you have a marketing planning calendar? Good for you, Christine. Good for you. A marketing planning calendar, a marketing calendar should be something that stares us in the face at all times. It shouldn't have the current month up. It should have the months in the future up, at least the following month and, and several months after that, the quarter, the, the next quarter. Um, and so as a, a part of today's webinar, um, you will find a link on uh, later on in the presentation. And we actually have started you out with a marketing calendar. What all should be on our marketing calendar? All of those milestones that we need to be hitting in order to be successful for those promotions. When am I going to reach out to the birthdays to get uh, birthday parties in place? We want to have our future months planned in advance. We want to have the business already planned to come in. We want to have the promotions in place. We want to have the marketing in place. And we want to have the staff in place. And so with a marketing plan, you can very quickly look and see, okay, I have this coming up. And it doesn't have to be just your major holidays. Right. It can be some fun stuff. It so should include some fun stuff. Absolutely. The calendar that we're starting you out with kind of gives you a little bit of a sample of some of those things. And if you put your, your thoughts together or reach out to some of your key uh staff members or, or just your frontline employees and say, hey, it's fixing to be a uh, hat day. What can we do to bring business in on hat day? It's something as simple as that. It actually is a fun exercise and it actually brings you together with the rest of your staff. So I am a huge fan of planning. Jay, you know that because we've Absolutely. worked together for a long time. Thank uh, God I, she I, is too. <laughs> so, um, you know, before you leave today, go to our uh, download file and you'll be able to get uh, a three month calendar for January, February and March of 2021. And if you do nothing more than follow that calendar for 20 for those three quarters now, not don't wait till January. Yeah, you can't wait till January. Quiet. You'll be way behind. Yeah, for uh, so sure. Do it today. When you today, as soon as you're done. Find that link to that folder, download that calendar and say, okay, what am I going to attack? What am I going to do successfully? And yeah. what am I going to reach or exceed my expectations on? So, you know, Dottie, you said some really interesting things about putting pen to paper, but don't forget, so many people will use an app. They might want it digitally. And that's fine too, because you can list out tasks and assign them to people in the app. And that's another best part of execution. We'll talk about that. But whatever you're comfortable with is the important part. Because you've committed to doing it, whatever system you're gonna use, 
that needs to be known, shared, and followed. Um, marketing done. Metrics. What are you going to talk about in the planning of the metrics phase? In the what are you going to talk about for metrics in the planning phase? Let me rephrase that. Well. First thing you're going to ask yourself are what are the goals for each of these programs that I've created now and I'm carrying over just because I had goals from last year doesn't mean they're going to be the same right Christine you you're not going to fill your house every Saturday night with with uh, extreme or rock and roll or global but right and the other thing Jay is our budget's not going to be the same this year likely so right. okay so now I ran this program last year but I had this as my budget well this year guess what my budget is not there how am I going to make concessions for that? So there's that. Now, the other thing is you can't have metrics if you don't track them, because what's the point? You're, you need to track your metrics, right? So if you're tracking revenue, if you're tracking number of units sold, if you're tracking engagement, a little bit harder to track, but can be done, you should plan for what, how will I track these metrics? These are the metrics I'm going for with this particular program or event, and this is how I'm going to track it. Some things are obvious. Obviously, you can track the number of units in your conquer. Just download the report from the time frame. Done. Um, but in order to do that, do you need to set up any other price keys that you don't already have? Maybe you need to set those up in advance. Uh, maybe you need to uh, track something manually. And if that's the case, what is the procedure? And you need to make sure that's documented so that all staff members can follow the procedures. So you'll have accurate numbers. So that's the planning phase. I think it's time to do my little trick and share my screen again so you can see that little block filled in. And like I said, don't stress about writing all this down. You're going to have a download that you can, it'll, it's all there for you. But I'll just do a quick review. Under operational and planning, what events will you create? Is there a budget for any of those? And do any of these events need staffing? Under the marketing, put all of your events and programs on that Q1 marketing calendar that Dottie spoke so highly about. Listen, for each program or event that you're creating, what is the collateral you're going to need to promote that? What needs to be created? What needs to be updated? Get those files together now. And then who is going to be, uh, what channels are you going to use to promote each of these events? Because like Dottie said in the beginning, it's not the same. I'm going to talk to Facebook. For these people, I'm probably going to go to Snapchat or TikTok or whatever for, these, for this other age group. Some of them you'll use multiple channels on. Not, not to be fancy, but consider that. And then uh, in, pl in your planning phase, what are the goals for each of your event and how will you track them? And Jay, I'm going to be a little bit corny here, but anybody <laughs> that has heard me present before has heard me say this. When you are in that phase and you're looking at the programs that you're doing, um, whether they're past programs or ideas for new pro programs that you want to uh, initiate in 2021, ask yourself, are they Insta-worthy? Mm. And I know those that have heard me present before are probably getting tired of me saying this, but you know, that's kind of what we, it, that's kind of a, a, a goal that we should have for, for everything that we do, because we want to encourage uh, the experience to be so great for customers that they want to post that experience on Instagram um, because that's what gets you the, the user generated content, which is the most valuable form of advertising that you can get. And with us all being on budgets this year, that's what we should be asking ourselves. That should be our number one goal with anything that we create is, am I creating something that's insta worthy? Keep yeah. that in the back of your mind as you go yeah. forward. Absolutely. And you know what I also want to show you? Um, when you go to the download uh, area that Dottie put in here, you're going to download our three-month marketing calendar. And you're going to also get our PDF for today um, that shows the stuff. I'd rather you not do it while we're on the show. You can kind of wait till the end. But um, here is what that – okay, well, I had it on the screen. Here's what that marketing calendar looks like. It's pretty simple, right? It's just a square with all the months on it. But look what we've got in here. We've got um, – all kinds of different uh, fun days that you can use in there. Like Dottie said, the hat day. Who knew that Friday, January 15th was hat day? Or better yet, Wednesday, January 13th is rubber ducky day. I think we're going to have to have a webinar on that day, Dottie, and I'm going to have to get a rubber ducky. So who knows? Maybe our next webinar will be January 13th. 
Um, and it's on the 13th. How crazy it's, would that be? <laughs> yes, 13 rubber ducks. Um, but you can see that we're already going into creative process because we see these fun things. And imagine what your staff would do in the center. They're going to come up with crazy stuff. So involve them in that planning phase too. And at the bottom, be sure to begin marketing spring leagues. Make sure you're offering something for all types of competitive bowlers. These are guidelines at the bottom that you need to pay attention to. You need to write more of these for yourself too because you're giving yourself lead time to get it done, right? And that's the reminder of other things happening. You can even put your known uh, regular specials on here if need be, but this is where you should capture all of your collateral or all of your uh, programs and events that you plan to offer throughout that month. So all the staff sees it. Everybody knows that this calendar exists and that we're gonna take action from this calendar. Hopefully the action's already been taken before they see this calendar. Let's just, that's, that's the whole goal of today. All right, let's talk about execution phase. Do you have any more to add to the planning phase, Dottie? No, I'm anxious to get to the execution phase. I know, this is your favorite part My too, favorite. right? <laughs> well, okay, so we same three buckets, operational, marketing, and metrics. Operational, simple. When you execute, the only thing you really need to worry about under the operational side is to bring your staff fully into the loop and get them on board. That means motivating them. That means educating them. That means getting their buy-in. Might mean getting their feedback, even though you're not going to change something at this late date in the game, but their feedback still might be valuable. We don't know that yet until you get it. Um, and that's pretty much it for the operational side. Now, the marketing, Dottie's going to take over on the marketing. Here's what you need to do when you execute your marketing phase. We have tons of things. We're going to both talk on this. I know we are. Right. You know, when it comes to the execute phase, there are a number of things. And, and, and I will address the marketing part of it. But I also want to, to talk about just the execution itself and how you need to make sure that that happens. When it comes to marketing, the, the thing is you want to be disciplined in what you do. Um, for example, if, if you are going to do a push on birthday parties, which that should be something that's on everybody's Easy. list, that should be on everybody's marketing calendar is that you're reaching out. Many of you uh, run a kids bowl free program or some type of fun, uh, summer program and you are gathering data from, from children. You don't have to just solicit children. You can solicit teenagers as well because they're looking for something to do for their birthdays as well. But when you um, are disciplined and you know that, for example, on the 15th of every month, I am going to send out uh, the, you know, I, I plan six weeks out when it comes to birthday parties. So on January the 15th, I'm sending out March uh, birthdays. That's just the way I do it because we want to give them plenty of time to call and schedule an event with us. Uh, it's also a good opportunity for you to wish them an early happy birthday. Uh, I like to put a voucher in their hands for them to come in. Maybe they haven't been in the center in a while, put something in their hands. We know when they come into the center, they're going to have a good time and then we're going to get that birthday party booked at our center. So when you have a plan in place, be dedicated to that plan. Uh, sometimes when it comes to marketing, it's, it's a thankless job and you don't see <laughs> the results. And it's very easy to bail on it. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, as, as Jay and I were preparing for this, I said, Jay, it's no different than saying you're going to start saving and you don't ever do that. And if you take simply 15 or $25 or $50, whatever, and you are disciplined and putting that small amount of money in place, eventually you're going to look back at it and you're going to have a nice little nest egg. Well, it's no different than with marketing. You have to be disciplined, and especially when you're marketing, uh, say, uh, maybe you have your sales team calling out for holiday parties, uh, you know, especially like this time of the year with the pandemic. It's very easy to get discouraged because, you know, you hear a lot of no's. A lot. But if you kind of turn that mindset around, and, and this is what, uh, you know, Jay and I work hand in hand with customers uh, through Virtual Marketing Manager Program, and I've kind of changed mindsets 
uh, with the sales team now, I don't want them to look at it as a sales call because really and truly that's not what it is. It's a right. relationship call. Just mm -hmm. like you have a call and you want to check on your friend and you want to say, hey, how's it going? I was thinking of you today. Uh, just wanted to check in on you. If you approach your sales calls in that manner instead of a, a quote sales call, I guarantee you the results are going to be much different. And on top of that, changing that mindset and shifting that mindset over to uh, more the approach of calling and checking on a friend. For many people in the sales team, if they're not, you know, in the sales field, when you start to talk about them doing calls or, or speaking with customers, a lot of them, it gives them the heebie-jeebies because I'm not a salesman. I don't like to have to sell stuff. Well, don't look at it that way. Right. Um, and so I think that that in itself helps a little bit. Um, but when it comes to marketing, have your plan in place and stick to it no matter what. No matter what. No matter Absolutely. What. Good job, Dottie. Um, for sure. So then Dottie's covered the marketing, you know, prepare your collateral. Oh, importance of proper looking collateral. That's something that we freak out about all the time on a regular basis not just with our customers when they try to show us stuff that maybe they've done, we'll point out that, you know, that's you, your effort is a hundred percent great, but let's talk about what you've delivered. Did it, does it represent your center? Does it look right? Does it have the same kind of branding that you would want? Uh, did you make your copies on some, did you make a copy of a copy of a copy? And you know what that looks like when we're done, it looks like some illegal passport from Bulgaria that, went through uh, Indonesia. I don't mean, I'm making up stuff. It's terrible is the bottom line. It's terrible. Um, so make sure your collateral is professional looking and created as best as you can. Don't just spend a lot of money to do that, people. It's cheap to do nowadays. And, and Jay, I want to mention many times the reason we see uh, collateral that's not up to par is because it was done at the last minute. Mm -hmm. So this all goes back to plan. So planning. If you plan in advance, you're going to have the opportunity to put thought into a nice looking piece of marketing material that is a true representation of what you are. Yeah. Uh, also, when you do this uh, marketing planning, you're going to timeline out your promotions and you're going to identify the responsibilities of your team. So who's going to do social media posts? Who's going to do the uh, email blast? Who's going to walk the floor during leagues and, and open play and do lane to lane talk with my customer base? These are all things that you need to plan ahead for because then and only then if it's on the list of to do, will it get done? You can't leave that up to chance. Absolutely. Uh, Part of that as well, Jay, needs to be um, when, when you are into the exit. Well, it actually falls into many phases, but to make sure that you have set very clear expectations from your staff. Yeah. You want to make sure, and, and if you get them involved early enough in the process, if you get them involved in the evaluation and the planning process, they're going to be more bought into this, to, to the execution of this program. But make sure that you have very clear expectations set from the very get-go, and then create what I call contagious enthusiasm. You... Part of the process of bringing them along in the process is it's much easier to get them on board and it's much easier for them to be enthusiastic about it when they've been part of the process. But at the very least, I call it a rah-rah. It's like a pep rally. Right. You've got to get your staff members on board because you know what? When it comes, you can have all the planning in place and you can have all these wonderful programs in place, but if the the staff members are not delivering the way they're supposed to be delivering. You're not going to be as successful as you can. The other thing is you want to make sure that you have made uh, everything. Uh, if you, if you're trying to track your metrics and you need uh, price keys set up and you need things to be wrong in a specific manner in order to pull the statistics on the reports that you need, then you need to make sure that you are properly, um, training the staff members as to the process that you expect them to take. If you don't do that, what's going to happen is the experience for the customer is going to be a little less than stellar. We, mm -hmm. we want it to be a smooth process. We don't want them to be inconvenienced. And we certainly don't want the employee to be put out with it because we all know what happens then. You walk up to the counter and you 
any one of us on this webinar today can spot an employee that's frustrated because yeah. they're having to ring something up and they're having to take one more step because, and they don't remember what that is, it shows all over them. And that is sending out the wrong message. You reminded me about, you know, Coley Edison when she was doing on the, on the uh, undercover boss and she had to ring the guy up under two systems and she was like, I don't know how to do this. And she was trying to be told. So yeah, it does send the wrong message to your customers. Uh, for sure. Um, okay, so let's talk about metrics now um, in the execution phase. It, so after your event's done, you need to develop what we call an after action report. Okay, that's what Dottie calls it because it's very <laughs> military, <laughs> but I love it and I want to use it. After action report, or I call it an event summary too. Either way, whatever you want to call it, you call it. But what is that? What's the purpose of that document? Well, after you have an event or a program, when it is done, you're going to put on there all of your statistics from your results. So whatever the goals were, and Dottie, we went back and forth on this together. Dottie believes that this after action report really should be created in the planning phase. And I don't disagree with that. You could have a book of them, right? When you plan what events you're going to create and run, make the after action report for it because you're going to have to list the goals of the program on that after action report and then your actual results. So yes, you can do this after action report in the planning phase too. And I didn't want to- as a reminder too. <laughs> it sure does. So uh, if I were doing it, I would probably make these up in the planning phase and then use them again in the execution phase after I'm done. Statistics. Uh, did you reach your goals? Whatever they were. Revenue. How much did you generate? What went well? And what has areas for improvement? And those are the two things that we forget to document. And then here it is a year later and we're sitting in a staff meeting and somebody says, oh, are we going to do the turkey shoot again? And it's like November 23rd and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. we're going to do the turkey shoot. And nobody remembers that last year when you tried to do the turkey shoot, this happened and that happened and it was a hot mess because we didn't document it. So save yourself the heartache, document anything that went great and anything that has an area of improvement so that when you go to look at next quarter or next year, quarter one, you simply pull out your after action reports and go, these are all the things we ran last year. And here's all the notes and here's all the results. So now how easy is that phase of evaluation for you? So, so Jay, I'm just going to point out, um, you know, there's really four buckets that I like to include in an after actions report because okay. maybe somebody's not real familiar with an after actions report. So I'm going to just kind of share with you what those four things are that you want to make sure that you're hitting. What was supposed to happen? What actually happened? Why was there a difference? And what can we learn from this? So if you cover all of that, I guarantee you that you will continue to build a better and better program or make sure that the programs that you're building are as successful as they can be. How many of those four steps that Dottie mentioned are factual? Anybody? Type in the comments. Dottie said four things. What was supposed to happen? What actually happened? Those are factual things. Those are black and white. We were supposed to get $100,000 in revenue and sell 39 of these things. We got 82,000 and we sold 27. Those are factual things. The other part may be a little bit more interpretive. And the other two statements were, what, what did we learn from this? That's a, that's a variable. You learned something, I learned something, but let's document it. So because just because you had a takeaway and I had a takeaway doesn't mean we both can have both takeaways now, right? So that's important. But two of those pieces are actual facts and data, data-driven. The other two are emotional-based to some degree. Absolutely. And, and Jay, you know, that's why I like to kind of go back to the planning stages um, and the evaluation stages. So I bring on my after actions report early on. And I'll also say that you can make that as detailed as you want. So if you have very specific things that you're doing for marketing and you want to make sure that you've captured the steps that you took for marketing or the budget that you had for marketing, make sure that you feel comfortable. There's not a one size fit all when it comes mm -hmm. to an after actions report. Um, and so the one that you have may be very basic and it may satisfy your needs, but 
for me, for example, who I'm very detail oriented, I'm very much uh, list driven. Um, so my after actions report um, may not be the best for you. So right. fine tune it and, and you know, you got to kind of get yourself into it and make it feel comfortable. For you. Right. And so maybe the first quarter of, of 2021, your action reports look a certain way. And after two or three months of them, you go, oh, I'm going to add this to it, or I'm going to change them this way. But they'll probably always evolve for a period of time until you reach a level of like, I got this. And that better be in 2022, because you've got all this data from 2021 that you're going to have at your disposal easily. My trick, my tip is just create a binder for after action reports and keep it with your marketing stuff and they'll all be in order by date. You'll have them from year to year and you might be able to look back on multiple years at some point in time and really draw some good conclusions. All right, well, I'm gonna do our little trick one more time and share with you the filled in document um, that's on the screen. So under the execution process, I'll just review it real quick. Operationally, just bring your staff into the loop and motivate them, get them involved with this whole process here. Uh, for marketing, make sure that collateral looks great as best it can. Timeline all those promotions out and find out who the responsibility parties are for executing the, um, the, the tasks, the marketing tasks, e-blast, delivery of direct mail, whatever it may be you're gonna do. And then your metrics. Fill out that after action report, do it in the planning phase if you feel comfortable. I think it's the best way to do it personally. And then use that for the future. Uh, and then what needs to change for next time. As Dottie talked about, that after action report is super valuable, but more importantly, it is also super flexible and you should make one that meets your needs. Dottie, anything more to add to the execution phase? No, I, I you know, I think that we've covered a lot, Jay, and you know, this year is a unique year. So what we do this year and the after actions reports that we have for this year, you know, they're going to wind up in our history books because yeah. it is not the way we've done things in the past. And so with all of this, with everything that we've talked about today, the one thing that I want to, um, to bring out is, you know, COVID has done a lot of really uh, horrible things to our, our businesses, but it's also shown us that every single one of you has the ability to be very creative and to think through what's going to be good for your center, what's going to be good for your customers. And that, you know, is one of those silver linings that I think that we found in, in COVID. It has shown us that we have to be able to look at our business through a magnifying glass and find the opportunities and look at things that we can do better, ways that we can save money. And the momentum that we have uh, started now needs to continue. But when it comes to our programs and our, our marketing, um, you have to also be able to change on the fly. Just yeah. because we have a plan in place and this is the way you know we had it planned, you can't be so structured that you can't pivot from that and make those changes Who's to say something might happen and, and you know, um, we have to make, uh, again, we have to make major changes to our business. If you look hard enough and you, if you collaborate with all those people that are surrounding you that want you to succeed as a business, then you are going to find a way. It's just like, you know, water trying to find its way out. It finds a crack somewhere to go through. If you are determined enough, you will find a way. You will be able to pivot from your plan and you'll be able to turn it and, and, and continue to drive your center up. I have no doubt. There is no room for any other way. No. And I'm very optimistic when it comes to that. If there's a will, <laughs> there's a way. And I'm sure, Jay, you've heard that many times. From me. I sure have. That's, and, you, you know, I do believe that, too, because if I really want something, I'm going to get it. Um, okay. And, you know, Jay, I, I do want to mention it, my passion is to be able to work with customers and help them to be successful. And I know that, that y'all heard us talk about we work with customers. We do have programs. If any of you are thinking, you know what, I just don't really know where to start or, or I'm struggling a little bit with this. I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I don't know, 
you know, I don't know if I can do this. We do have programs in place. You aren't alone. There are right. programs that can help you. So you can reach out to, to either one of us and we can share with you what we can do for you. Um, at the very least, you've got a, a calendar that, that you can start off with. You got to do it now, folks. Don't yeah. wait till January, February, March. To You're do already it. actually a month work. behind. <laughs> You're already a month behind, but you know, we'll let you slide on the first time. Um, I want to go over the takeaways for today. Uh, takeaways that we came up with um, from our conversation today. Oh, I'm not sharing. Uh, here we go. So planning to succeed that's a must. You, if, you, if you want to be successful, you need to plan for that. You could be successful if you're lucky, but that's not the formula for success. Um, follow the outline of evaluate, plan, execute. Pretty simple to do. And then use all of your team. You don't have to be the person that does all the evaluation, all the planning, and all the execution. If you are, I mean, you have to be the person if you're a one employee bowling center, but I don't know of one that exists like that. So share those responsibilities, find the right people to get them involved and get them on board. Um, create an after action report or event summary that you can learn from and will document your performance from year to year to year. Super valuable. Back in the day, we used to have the red book. Remember, we'd flip through the red book and see, get the red book and see what we did last year. I'm telling you, the if Bible. somebody stole the Bible, right? Well, we had something <laughs> we call the Bible too, but that was another like binder that was so overstuffed with flyers and different things, but that's another story. But yeah, those after, after action reports and event summaries are super valuable. But at the beginning of Q1, so when January 1 hits, what are you going to do? You're going to repeat this process for Q2. So in January, you are going to start planning April, May, and June, right? And then you're going to repeat that. In April, you're going to start planning July, August, September. You see how this cycle works until you're back to square one. It's four times a year. Suck it up. Buttercup. Do it well. Do it to the best of your ability and get paid for it. Right? I agree with that. You're going to make money. All right. I'm going to share the screen again. <laughs> oh, no, we have questions. It's question time. Da, 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 da. Question and time. Jay, we have had a question that came in uh, in advance. Okay. Um, and it, the, the question is, how far in advance do you recommend planning? Um, I'll take a stab at that because I have my recommended. Um, I like to look at, at the entire year. I like to plan it out. And then I take it by quarter, just like Jay was just saying, a quarter in advance. I fine tune that plan. Um, and, and again, as long as you go into it with the mindset that, uh, you know, this is fluid, I can make changes as I go if necessary. But for me, I like to plan things out a year in advance and then fine tune them by the, by the quarter. Yep, I agree with that process altogether. I also agree with um, Bill Schwer, who says January 24th, National Peanut Butter Day. I'll be celebrating that one for sure. Me and Reese's are good friends. <laughs> so I we'll think have it's one a good peanut you. butter and jelly special that day in the. In oh, the yeah, like a gourmet peanut butter and jelly. That's right. Uh, you, okay. Jelly and peanut butter. <laughs> I'm always jelly. Um, Great session, says Will. Thanks. We are at the University of Houston and do most of what you presented today through our marketing department and through a monthly report that we submit to our director each month. And that talks about our programs and revenue. So our market is limited currently to the uh, university community. And given that 86% of classes are online, it's been slow. Hoping for a better time. So are we. We're hoping for you, uh, Bill. Don't worry. Um, Got to run to a Zoom meeting. Thanks again. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Bill. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate the question and uh, the peanut butter support. If you look here, I don't know how I switched the, there we go. If you look at the screen now I'm sharing, you've got our email address. And so if you want to contact Dottie or I, just drop us an email. Pretty simple, D, uh, D San Martin or J Nephew at cubicamf.us, not .com for our emails. Although I think we still get it either way. Um, our resources we want to point out today, the website, cubicamf.com, you all know about that. Under Facebook, obviously, uh, many of you know about our worldwide page and the Beyond the Frame group. Uh, those are two Facebook resources. We have our YouTube channel now, uh, the Cubic AMF channel worldwide. So you'll see all of our videos, including this webinar, will end up there at some point in time to watch for future reference. And new 
is wide open. You don't have to register for it anymore. The Best Extras blog, and that's its own web address of bestextras.com. So there's your uh, resources. And if you want today's collateral, I've listed the, um, the, uh, the bit.ly link there for you to go and get it, but it's also in the chat and the chat makes it just click on it. So if I were you, I would just click on it from there. <laughs> uh, any other questions coming in? Uh, Christine, thank you for great ideas and useful takeaways. Always something to learn from you. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. Uh, we love to chat with our people. And if we can give you one little nugget of anything, then we're happy campers. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, if anybody has a marketing plan out there, I'm just going to throw this out. If you have a marketing plan out there or if you have uh, if you download the one that we've got for you today and you add some of your own stuff to it, and you want to share it back with us. We'd love to see it. I can probably speak for Jay as well. I get very excited when I see things that we have helped people with kind of come to life and see that the things that we're providing for you and uh, stuff like that, that it's been valuable to you or useful to you. It, it's our reward for what we do. Um, so, uh, you know, any feedback you have, we, we take it to heart. We use it to grow ourselves. Um, so never hesitate to let us know what's on your mind. No, we're always happy to hear. Um, okay, well, I, on behalf of Dottie San Martin and myself and the rest of us at Cubic AMF, I'm going to say sayonara, I believe, because we don't have any more questions today. Dottie, you want to say some closing comments? The only or closing you just comments did. that I have, Jay, is I just um, ask that everybody stay safe and be well uh, and, and just stay healthy. Uh, that, you couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much. Uh, until uh, January sometime, maybe maybe Rubber Ducky Day, I don't know, uh, <laughs> hopefully. We'll see you at our next webinar. We don't know when it is yet, but you'll know. We'll, we'll let you know. Uh, take care, everybody. Have a beautiful weekend. Stay safe out there. Those of you that are still fighting the, uh, the battle with your centers, we're sending all the positive vibes your way. Things are going to turn around. We feel it. Okay, have a good one.